State your name after the tone, and Google Voice will try to connect you. Heather Goodall? Oops, sorry. Hello? Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you today? Good. How are you? Who am I speaking with again? I am a well. This is for Ray. I'm glad we were able to connect today. Um, I won't keep you on here long, um, and you will be paid for the time that we're on the call, okay? Great. What was your name again? I didn't catch it. Did you say Ray? For Ray. Oh. A-R-A-E. Yeah. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm well. So in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Well, wait, um, um, you said, just to clarify, so your HR investigations for Amazon? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little curious. Um, I have a manager and two HR managers at the warehouse, and also my Mm -hmm. general manager is Nicholas Schlautz, and there's Haley Mm -hmm. Krug. So why am I receiving a call from you if I have a manager and HR at my place of employment? So I guess I'm a little confused. I gotcha. So I am an investigator with the Employee Relations Central Investigations Team. And so there are certain um, scopes of investigations that are handled by our team, Mm -hmm. and there are certain scopes of investigations that are handled by the site team. We both partner, but Mm -hmm. our scopes are different. And so, yes, I am an employee of Amazon. I'm with Employee Relations, but this the scope of this particular investigation is handled by the Central Investigations Team. So can you tell me the difference between the two so I understand? Absolutely. So your site HR team is just relegated to your particular site. So your site HR team would handle um, matters within a certain scope that um, relate to ALB1, whereas Central Investigations, we're not assigned to a specific site. So we handle um, investigations across the entire network. But if I work for ALB1, um, then why, that's what I under, I don't understand. So what is the scope of your investigation versus what HR at my place of employment rate at ALB1 would handle? I just don't understand why if somebody from outside of my workplace is calling me. So what would they handle versus what you handle? I got you. Well, before I go into any of that, let me go ahead and read the disclaimer and then we'll get back into your questions, okay? Mm-hmm. And so like I mentioned, my name is Foray, and I'm an investigator with the Amazon Central Investigations Team. I set up this meeting with you to discuss concerns pertaining to a recording taken during a feedback meeting. So, um, during our meeting, I will ask questions pertaining to that particular allegation, and I would like you to answer with as much detail and as honestly as possible. During our conversation, I will be taking notes, so be aware that you may hear, hear keyboard typing sounds in the background, <laughs> um, and there may be occasional pauses, and that's completely normal. Um, I want to quickly review our standard rules for this process. Number one, Amazon expects that employees will cooperate, be honest, and not interfere with, impede, or undermine the investigation. Number two, the investigation will be conducted as confidentially as possible. However, confidentiality cannot be guaranteed. I will limit the disclosure of information to only those people who have a legitimate reason to know. Yeah. Number three, Amazon policies prohibit retaliation against anyone who makes a complaint or participates in an investigation, and therefore you will mm-hmm. not suffer any negative consequences for making a good faith complaint or participating in this investigation. So Please I- inform me. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Let me finish. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Please inform me, your manager, or a member of your site HR team immediately if you feel like you believe you are experiencing retaliation. I am not recording this conversation, nor do I consent to it being recorded. I would like to also reiterate that this is an internal HR investigation, so we do not allow third parties to participate in interviews or other investigation related meetings. So, now, we can return to your questions, Heather. So, um, I just want to clarify that, first of Mm -hmm. all, I live in the state of New York, and New York is a one-party consent. And furthermore, you're calling me from outside of my place of Mm -hmm. employment, and that raises a lot of suspicion for me. Because if I have an HR manager and I have 
multiple managers, you know, it's, it's very unusual for someone. And I perceive you as a third party. That's how I perceive you as an associate. So please understand that. And furthermore, we've had these employee relations in the warehouse that are approaching workers. And when you say that you are HR employee relations, what is your affiliation with those HR, or excuse me, um, the HR employee relations? So are they investigating us in the warehouse? Because that's what they're identifying themselves as. So that's why I'm confused. We have these people that are identifying themselves as HR. They wear human resources vests or they wear orange vests. One day they're HR, one day they're employee relations. So are they one and the same? I honestly couldn't speak to that, Heather, because I'm not really certain who you're Uh, referring to. Um, I can clarify that I am not a third party. So as you know, Amazon consists of more sites than just AOB1. Okay. So we're all employed by Amazon. So I am an Amazon team member just on a different team. And so, like I mentioned before, those certain items within scope are handled by your site team. And then there are certain um, Mm. items that are in other scopes that are handled by the central investigation team. And it's mm-hmm. actually really as a benefit to associates because it eliminates bias, you know, and, and it mm-hmm. creates equity and consistency across the network. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of our target there. Well, um, I would hope I'm that... Not, I'm, not, I, I'm not outside of the organization. I'm still, I'm still part yeah. of the Amazon family. Well, I'd like to say that, um, and then we'll move forward, but, you mm-hmm. know, you're referencing um, the opportunity for you to call me and avoid bias in the warehouse, but I would assume that my manager has the ability to handle anything unbiased. So the fact that they are basically, in essence, giving me the impression that they can't handle something unbiased to the point where we have to have an outside representative call me is a little troubling, but that's okay. So I'm sorry, did you say that there was an allegation against me that you're investigating? Absolutely. And just to clarify, the fact that we exist is not to indicate that there are any managers out there that are not capable of handling the Mm. situation without bias. But of course, you know, one of our leadership principles is earns trust. And Mm -hmm. so it's important that we know that our associates can trust that we are making every effort to be consistent and equitable across the network. So that's why that was said. So yes, so... Um, There was uh, an allegation um, that there was a recording made of a meeting that took place, I want to say maybe mid to close to the end of August. It was the feedback administration. Um, There was an area manager present, I believe, and there was a recording made of the exchange. And so I just wanted to kind of talk with you about it to see, number one, if you were aware of it, and maybe you could give me some additional context into um, what happened there. So, um, okay. as I mentioned, it was a recording that was that took place um, when you were receiving feedback. Do you recall this interaction? So, first, um, I guess I'm a little puzzled because it's mm-hmm. October 3rd, and um, you're referring to an incident that occurred, you're claiming, on August 25th? Um, possibly around that time. Can I get an exact date? I can try to get you an exact date. Hold on just a sec. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, It looks like it was reported on August 27th. So let me get this straight. It's October 3rd, a week before the upcoming election, and I am the lead campaign manager and executive board member of the Amazon Labor Union for which is holding the election. So you're claiming that on October 3rd, you're calling me about an incident that potentially happened on August 27th. Am I getting that right? Yes. Is there any reason that you're calling me a week before the election with this allegation? So my call is not associated with any election. Actually, I'm not aware of an election. We, um, reach out when we receive cases. So we don't know that the case exists until we are assigned to it, right? And so that's, I'm not sure what the delay was, but I can only contact you or have information regarding the case if it's assigned to me. Okay, so the delay, I can assure you, is an attempt 
to once again, this is actually Friday, I received an investigation, and now today I received an investigation. So I think it's clear that the timing is consistent with retaliation against me. So I want to get this straight. So you're claiming that the allegation today is that someone recorded me during feedback? No, actually the allegation is that you recorded the feedback meeting. So, I'm sorry, what is the allegation? That you recorded a meeting that took place between you and a manager where feedback was administered to you. So, you're saying that they're violating my rights under the New York I'm State law saying, that allows... Wait a minute. Are you saying that somebody made a complaint against me for exercising my rights as a New York State resident? Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm telling you that someone filed a complaint against you for recording a feedback meeting and then posting it to um, social media sites. And my role in this mm -hmm. is to just conduct fact-finding. That's all I'm doing. I am not assessing you know, blame on one party or another. My role in this to, is to fact find and determine if a policy violation took place. Number one, if the behavior is confirmed, and number two, if the policy violation took place. That's it. So, hmm. can we proceed? Oh, sure, go ahead. Okay, okay, great. So, do you recall the instance that I'm speaking of? Well, I've been called into several meetings. I have mm -hmm. been written up. I have been violated under the Whistleblower Act for the OSHA complaint I filed. I have been um, called into a meeting after surveillance on me. I have been kicked out of a union meeting and then called into a meeting with two managers regarding um, the fact that they kicked me out of this meeting. I have been written up. Um, I have been approached by managers um, on several occasions. And and like I said, I just had an HR investigation on Friday. So to answer your question, based on the amount of times that I have been retaliated against, based on the amount of times my rights have been violated, based on the amount of times I've been called into meetings or approached, it is very difficult for me to recall a specific event at this point. So I would have to actually do a little bit more research. Um, can you give me um, specifics about what the meeting was and what happened and that might help me to recall? Absolutely. So it looks as though um, you met with an area manager named Madeline Banks um, where there were uh, there was a safety violation and a behavioral violation that were administered. It looks like they were both final written warnings. Do you recall that? Of course I recall that because it was actually okay. a violation of my rights under the OSHA Whistleblower Act. And we've actually, um, I actually did speak with an investigator um, that represents OSHA and the Whistleblower Act. So now this sounds like another form of retaliation against me for filing that complaint with OSHA. So once again, they are now further violating my rights under the Whistleblower Act and retaliating against me. So this is a true form of retaliation against me once again. Okay. We're, um, well, first of all, can you tell me who was present for that meeting? Um, as you mentioned, Madeline Banks was my manager. Uh -huh. And I believe Lauren Smith. So, um, and we did, like I said, file a complaint following this meeting with OSHA for retaliation and also with the NLRB for violating my rights and surveilling me. Okay. Okay. So, prior to the meeting that you had with Madeline and Lauren, were they aware that you filed the, the um, the complaint with OSHA? Absolutely. Absolutely they knew. Okay. How were they aware? 
because after the photos were taken, I sent them to the general manager, Nick, and it was well known that I had filed um, a complaint with OSHA, and I can tell you the date was July 2nd, because after I filed the OSHA investigation, I actually left the warehouse by ambulance, at which time I was out for six weeks. So they knew that on July 2nd, I, and I actually said it in the meeting, I said in the meeting, the photos that I took that you are writing me up for were part of a complaint filed with OSHA and that I was protected under the Whistleblower Act and they still move forward with the retaliation against me even though I pointed out that they were violating the law that they were violating my rights so I do remember this because I then in turn spoke with my attorney and we filed the complaint for retaliation and once again it's happening Okay, gotcha. What was your reasoning for recording the meeting? Because I was being retaliated against and I needed to document such as I did on July 2nd with the grave risk that was posed to associates, at which time I then in turn filed the complaint with OSHA. And Amazon and my managers were retaliating against me for, in fact, filing the OSHA investigation that did result, as I said, in a federal OSHA investigation a couple weeks later. So I absolutely did the right thing because they're finally making improvements in the warehouse because OSHA was in there. And had I not done that, it is possible that somebody could have died in those aisles because bins were collapsing, items were falling off of shelves, and there was wires protruding into the aisles that were causing lacerations. So on July 2nd, I absolutely took those photos, but I also, by the way, had permission the following, the previous weekend, I recorded a conversation at which time I made sure that I documented that a manager knew, in fact, that I was taking photos. So they knew about this. They knew that I had documented this. So when I got called into a meeting that violated my rights, I had every right to ensure that I was protected as an associate, especially since I had previously obtained um, permission from an ops manager of the fact so this they clearly knew and they didn't object to it okay were madeline and lauren aware that you were recording a hundred percent okay how were they aware that you were recording during the meeting because they saw me they i had permission to do this not to mention again i want to clarify that mm -hmm. I was protected under my right, under, I live in New York State. The Amazon is not above the law. I'm sorry, but if your policies are not consistent with the law, that's not something that I have any control over. Here's what I have control over. I have control over the fact that I am protected in New York State as a resident to exercise the law. I am protected under the NLRA to exercise my rights as a union organizer. And I am protected under the law for the Whistleblower Act through OSHA. So I have three very strong protections that I'm sorry, definitely have more, have more weight then Amazon's, Amazon's policy is violating my rights. What am I supposed to do? And then think about that. And the other thing I would like to point out is that here it is October 3rd and the election is a week away. And this is the second investigation that I've had since Friday. So clearly this is another form of retaliation. This has nothing to do with me exercising my rights under the law, under the NLRA, or under... Uh, OSHA's Whistleblower Act. Those are very strong points that I'm making. And I'd like to also make a point that this is something that happened on August 27th. Is there any reason that you're calling me a week before the election? And I think that that's a clear demonstration that once again, Amazon is retaliating against me and trying to avoid having me present 
to speak about my rights and about the law. So I know my rights, and that's what makes me strong. So the fact that they're once again retaliating against me. Oh, oh, Heather, I'm losing you. Hello? I'm here. Are you here? Okay, okay, I can hear you now. You kind of went out for a minute. Okay, okay. All right, I got you now. Okay. And I certainly hope that you're going to handle this as a form of retaliation in the warehouse because it's getting excessive. The amount of meetings, the amount of conversations, the watching everything I'm doing. And by the way, I believe that they're recording me. Even though I'm protected under the NLRA, they're recording me. And I know it, but do you see me filing retaliation claims? No, because I'm far too busy for, for that. Gotcha. So what did you do with the recording that you took of the meeting? I gave it to my attorney. You gave it to your attorney? Okay. Because I'm protected under the law. Okay. Did you, in fact, post the audio recording to any social media platforms? Are you, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I said yes. Did you... Um, post any of the recording to any social media platform I believe I've answered I've answered your question thoroughly okay okay so okay alrighty and was this the first time that you recorded this particular manager with your phone meaning Madeline I've answered your question thoroughly and now you're further violating my rights by continuing to ask me questions that I've already answered. You've already answered whether this was the first time you recorded Madeline? I'm sorry, I, I must have missed that. Okay, so let me repeat it. I am protected okay. under the law as a resident of New York State. Okay, and the law states that we are one party consent. I live in the great state okay. of New York, so if I choose to exercise my rights under the law, then that is my right. I'm also protected under the NLRA from surveillance. And I feel as though what you're asking me is in part due to surveillance or retaliation based on the fact that this occurred August 27th and now you're asking me for dates outside of that. You asked me about August 27th, but now you want to further expand to other dates. So unless you have a specific date, I can't answer that, can I? So why are you asking me, have I ever done it outside of August 27th when you have no complaint? You're asking me to expand on that. And again, I'm going to defer to the fact that I am protected under New York State law, and I'm protected under the NLRA, and I'm protected under the OSHA, OSHA Whistleblower Act. So now you're trying to expand on that further than the date in question. Is that a fair assessment? Um, I do not agree, and I'll just share with you why. First of all, I do want to say, Heather, that it's not my intent to impede on any rights that you have under any of those statutes that you name. As I mentioned previously, my role in this is just to fact-find based on the allegation. Um, if you do not want to answer any questions outside of what happened on August 27th, that's fine. Um, but no, I'm not, this, this investigation is not based on any type of retaliatory measure. As I mentioned, I wasn't even aware of a, a vote or anything that was coming up. My investigation is strictly based on the allegation that I received to investigate, so it was strictly to fact find. So just to clarify, if the question is not specifically around what took place on August 27th, you are opting not to provide a response. because I don't want to continue to ask you and make you feel as though I'm, you know, pressuring you or retaliating against you if that's your position. I just want us to be on the same page. You asked me to answer questions and fact find with regard to an August 27th incident. I've given you plenty of facts and the facts that protect me and my rights. But now you're asking me to expand beyond that. Do you have a complaint that expands beyond that particular date? The call was initiated based on an August 27th incident. Here we are, October 3rd. 
So, did I answer your questions with regard to the incident that you are calling me investigating? Yes, you did. Okay. And is it your request not to answer any further questions? There should be no further questions. That's my point. Well, okay. Well, that is totally your right, Heather. And like I said, I, it, this was not an intent to upset you or create a contentious situation. As I mentioned, my role was to fact find around the behavior that was alleged. And so if you are okay with leaving it here, we can leave it here. Is and there, really is there any other way mind. to... So let me ask you a question. Absolutely. Have I answered all of your questions? Ma'am, I'm sorry. I... I didn't catch that last question. Did I answer? I heard have I and then questions. Sorry. Did I answer all of your questions? No, ma'am, you have not. But how? If, if it if it's making you uncomfortable to answer the additional questions, what some what of the other questions, questions? I have are not specifically around that particular day. But um, that's like that's the only answer. Those. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, you called me regarding an August 27th incident. Did you not? I called you regarding an allegation around that incident, but there okay. is a particular behavior that, like I said, I have to confirm that the behavior took place and then whether there was a policy violation. So, yes, the, the, the allegation mm -hmm. is predicated on what took place on August 27th. Absolutely. Okay. So, if there's any dates outside of August 27th, you can't necessarily expect for me, as I've stated, with the amount of times that I've been pulled into meetings, that I've been contacted, mm -hmm. that I've been approached, to remember every single date. Therefore, I'm not leaving questions unanswered. I'm simply asking for specific dates so that I can recall exactly what happened. So if you have specific dates and specific allegations, then I will be more than happy to answer them. Okay, understood. Well, um, no, I don't have any specific dates because that was the only specific date that was provided. So isn't it fair to say that calling me to investigate a specific date and a specific allegation, I have answered your questions thoroughly. And now to seek out another incident looking for the answer that I believe you're looking for is unfair to me because if there's an investigation, I, am, I deserve to know a specific date so that I can expand on that specific date. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, on, I'm not leaving your questions unanswered. I'm simply asking for specifics so that I can, in turn, answer your question appropriately. Understood. And if I had additional specific dates, I would provide them, but I am only at the mercy or disposal of information that's provided to me. So if there were no additional specific dates that were provided to me, I wouldn't be able to provide them to you. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. This is, sounds like a fishing expedition. That's what this sounds like. If Heather gives accurate answers and backs her answers with the law, then let's fish and see what else we can find. And that's, that's very unfair to me. That's unfair to send you or I on a fishing expedition to try to get the answer they're looking for a week before the election. So what I'd like to say is I truly believe that I have answered your questions thoroughly and accurately and back those answers by the law and my rights. And if there are any other incidences or occasions, I would be more than happy to answer those questions as I have today. However, I'm not going to be going down a fishing expedition looking for an answer. I need to know specific dates. And I think that's fair, don't you? Understood. Um, if I but you agree that that's fair, right? Dates, Is that I fair? I will certainly be happy to reconnect with you, mm -hmm. and we can explore those further. But if not, I truly appreciate your time, Heather, and you calling me when you say you would. I mm -hmm. really appreciate it, and the information that you provided. So, in, in that space, mm -hmm. um, I don't have any additional questions. So, Great. thank you so much. Okay, so we agree. There are no further questions regarding this incident and I have answered all of your questions um, I've thoroughly would you agree with that based on, based on what you've shared I don't have any additional questions okay 
That sounds great. Thank you so much. And wait, when will I get the results of this investigation? Because I have to tell you, this is actually the third investigation, and Amazon has failed to provide me with anything in writing. Anything. And the allegation, the outcome, and I really need something in writing. Understood. Absolutely. Well, I'm hoping to be able to work through this investigation this week, mm -hmm. um, and I will provide you a response in writing to your personal email. And while I have you on the phone really quick, can I confirm it with you? I have Heather G-V-A-N-I-N-E, mm -hmm. L-L-I-615 mm -hmm. at gmail.com. You got it. Okay, and it will come to your personal email address. It probably won't show that it's from my name. It'll just say um, Amazon HR or something like that, but it'll be from me. You'll see my signature on it and everything, okay? Where are you located? I forgot to ask because I talked to so many people. So where are you located? Oh, I'm virtual, so I'm in North Mississippi. Mississippi? Oh, my goodness. I haven't <laughs> talked to anybody from Mississippi. <laughs> wow, they, they got you guys all over, huh? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to the results of this investigation, uh, respecting my rights and moving forward. Thank you. Have a great day, Heather. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.